morning, everybody. Michelle is here on this Sunday. I hope everybody's doing fantastic, magnificent, and marvelous. Because I am. Most definitely, I am. So, um, if my voice sounds a little weird, it's because, you know, of the seasons outside. Because I was doing a lot of sneezing. And that's probably allergies or something. Uh, I don't feel sick. I don't, have, you know, I don't have any symptoms of being sick or anything like that. And so I'm good. Uh, no one necessarily lives. No, I mean, no one lives in the house with me, so I'm not concerned about spreading something, whether it's a cold or anything else. I, you know, uh, I think it's important, you know, like I said, to uh, give people proper, proper space, you know. Even if you are married to someone or going out with someone, you don't necessarily want to get them sick uh, because you know that can be that can be devastating, especially if it's a pandemic sickness. You know the way you can spread it to someone or a cold because you know everybody can catch a cold regardless of how healthy you are. No one's immune from catching a cold, so I'm, I think it's probably just a, a, some sort of allergy. Because, like I said, I don't feel feverish or sick and blah, 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 blah. All right. I shared my health with you. So, um, man. Wow. What a difference a day make. What a difference several days make. And uh, to look at, you know, for me to be looking at and being very reflective and, um, I threw out a word or threw out a concept or threw out a whatever about we're at an inflection point or inflection, you know, where we're, where there's there's a drastic change or a bend or something like that, you know. And remember, everything is positive and negative. Um, and as individuals, as myself, I'm just gonna stick it with stick on me. I choose um, because I have free will. To neutralize it, neutralize what's going on, what people are saying and what people are doing, and what I'm doing is sitting back and observing it. Find a lot of contradictions, of course, but I told you you can't get rid of contradictions. No way, no way. Uh, so, and we all have them, so we just have to accept that. But learn how to neutralize it and and make it make sense to you. All right, make your contradictions make sense to you. So that you understand what you are, you know, emitting out into the world, out into the universe. You know, you be, you be good about what you're doing because eventually, you know, like I said, there's a boomerang that goes out. And what happens with the boomerang eventually? It comes back, right? Same, you know, the cause and effect, you know, the reaping what you've sown. Uh, but on top of that, uh, our extremism and our fanatic, fanatic, you know, we're just fanatic and extreme. You know, that's the part that is uh, crushing everything and preventing development of the consciousness, by the way. When you're so extreme and fanatical, fanaticalism, fanaticalism, you know, it's, uh, it's, um. Uh, it's definitely an imbalance with that, definitely, and that can that can cause more, uh, that can that can uh, cause more of a uh, uh, a destruction actually, you know, than anything, you know, when you're so fanatical in one way or another, because it's almost like you are grinded to a halt, and. Um, uh, you know, and when you, you know, it's like, it's like the computer is kind of stopped, but all the parts are still moving, you know, and, 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 and the parts are not being monitored and then, da, 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 you know, this is, and then it gets out of control, fanatical. You overdo it, you know, leave it in the oven too long, you know, or you uh, don't cook it long enough, something. It's a, it's a development issue. Severe, severe, uh, devastating development issue when you're so extreme or, or when you are fanatical and you just are, 
you know, you, you, I mean, you, it's a hard grinding, you know, a force. And at some and it's definitely, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's already opening up into an explosion phase. And so that's why, I guess that's why inflection came to mind. You know, when, when, when someone said it, I heard someone say it somewhere and, I, and, and it stuck with me, inflection. So, so as I, you know, kind of look around and observe, because that's what I love to do, by the way. I love doing that and, and, and paying attention to how people are acting and what people are saying and what people are doing. You know, people watching, I'm always fascinated by that too, right? And so that's, that's where we are. You know, we got, we have this, uh, we, we have this extremeness on each side. We want to ex be extremely positive or we want to be extremely negative. Nobody really is coming to, uh, uh, to a neutral, to neutralize in that, you know? And then on top of that, that's, like I said, that's how we created that encasement of negativity because nobody wanted to give, nobody wanted to give. Everybody's holding and holding and holding. And, and grinding and, and and actually grinding, you know. It's, I mean, if, if there was a sound, you know. Okay, and I'm, like I said, I'm doing everything I can to visualize what I'm saying to you. So that's something I, because I mean, because I can, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm visualizing, you know, when I visualize, or when not necessarily when I'm visualizing, but when I'm in thought and I'm paying attention to the energy of the thoughts. You know, I have mine managed. But it still affects me, whatever, nonetheless. And when I'm kind of paying attention and monitoring and listening to what people are saying, how they're contradicting themselves, how they uh, have to come out and apologize for this, or they have to come out and denounce this, or they have to come out and revisit this, and they have, you know, yeah, wow. Oh. So that's why you have to be in control of your thoughts. And be in control of your behavior and actions and, and take a moment to and not be responsive, not be impulsive. Okay. Uh, because sometimes, you know, because that's going to cause even more harm than good when you're impulsive because there's no, there's no escape. Also, a lot of people think, um, or thinking in a way of, uh, you know, wanting to escape accountability, escape responsibility, and 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 and, and you know, thinking they can okay escape it all, and you know, no, 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 it's still you know they're still they're still cause and effect, okay, and they're still um, reaping what you you know none nothing's changes no matter where you go in the world by the way, okay, uh, uh, uh this might be a long video, I can tell already, because hey, this is how this is how this is how we do it. So um when I started all of this rambling, you know, into my cell phone, uh, you know, it's after I like I said, after I came out of my toxin environment and I was recovering. I was recovering. And, um, you know, when I started talking into the cell phone, you know, I, I had lost my voice for almost, from one to three months. You know, my voice was gone. And I made that clear and I have documents. To, I mean, it's documented. If you listen to the video, I, I can barely, you know, I can barely get it out. And, um, you know, in the beginning, I was concerned. I was like, man, I don't have a voice. What's the one to what? You know, how am I going to take care of myself? So that... That kind of gave me some concern because I told you, you know, taking care of myself and providing for myself is, is a necessity for me. That's my responsibility, whether somebody is helping me or not, you know. Um, and so I go, I'm, I always go back to my parents because I told you my parents were the model for me, the model. Um, and they kind of gave me, you know, excellent visuals, not only my parents, but the black culture in general, just that whole um, educational uh, environment. It was an educational environment, black culture. All right. 
And so, um, and th you know, there's going to be more to talk about with this. So I'll kind of get to my, my point on this Sunday. Um, so I told you when my dad saw my mom, when they were in the elementary school, he took notice of her. Okay. Let me say, okay. Hmm. And um, I'm not sure, uh, I didn't ask any more than that because I mean, it, you know, that's his, that's his um, alignment, a path, his, 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 uh, his perception of whatever. I didn't ask all of that because, you know, I think that's for him and my mom to talk about. And they had, like I said, they, they were married over 50 years, so they had plenty to talk about. And I, you know, I used to hear him talking in bed at, at night when I was a young girl because I remember I couldn't. Couldn't sleep sometimes at night, but I couldn't I couldn't yell out to them and say, you know, I just kind of sat there and just, you know, or laid there because I couldn't wake up anybody, okay? But sometimes I, before I would go, in, go this, make this be clear, before I would go to sleep, I would hear them talking in their room together. So I would doze off to sleep and then I, and then I would get up in the middle of the night and, you know, just, you know, in terror, um, 